with the very first one. That is a Power BI overview. When we talk about business intelligence, in few words, business intelligence simply means transforming data into business insights. Transforming data into business insights. Now, apart from that, business intelligence enumerates all areas of organization, helps you to readily identify areas for improvement and allows you to prepare and instead of what's being reactive, you will be proactive in whatever you do if you can go deeply into business intelligence. So actionable information and effective business intelligence system serves as means of identifying key organization pattern and trend. I'm very sure that all of us here today will be much interested in seeing what is happening in our business even long before there will be any issue or crisis arise. So that is why we are using a powerful tool called Microsoft Power BI. Microsoft Power BI is a powerful analytical tool that helps companies of all sizes analyze data and share insights. With this technology, enterprise can monitor their business more closely and get instant answer to reach dashboard available for every device. You just mentioned the device, iPad, phone, laptop, any TV, anyhow you want to render your visuals, you can put it on any device. Now, before I move on into the other part of the deal, let's quickly look at the trend in 2016 versus 2017. Power BI is not the only BI tool we have out there. We have other BI tool, as you can see. We have Tableau. Apart from Microsoft Power BI, we have Click. Apart from Click, we have SAP. Apart from SAP, we have other analytical tool, but just between 2016 and 2017, Power BI gave us a great shoot. And today, Power BI is the leading BI tool in the world. As you have it, in this leader, amongst the leaders, we have just three of them there for now. Microsoft Power BI, Tableau, and Click. So let's go to the next important part of our meeting today. We want to look at Power BI flowchart diagram. Now, when we talk about Power BI, I'll just understand the architecture behind this. Number one, we have Power BI can help you connect to over 200 data sources out there. Just mention the database as simple as test file, XML, Excel file, SQL server, Oracle database, DB2. Mention all the database you have there. As long as the database has a connection in Power BI, Power BI can easily connect to that database. And if not, it gives, gives us opportunity to connect using API. Apart from API, you can also connect using ODBC, anything you might think of. I'm going to show us shortly all our Power BI can connect to all these data sources. Now, apart from connecting to those data sources, Power BI desktop is the area where you do the cooking, the design, everything you want to do. You work on it on Power BI desktop. But understand one thing, Power BI desktop is absolutely free. You can download it and use it anytime, anywhere. So you have that. Now, once you are done with your wonderful visuals and analysis, the next thing you want to do, you want to share this report with your colleagues. And to be able to share the report with your colleague, I'm very sure you don't want to be carrying your laptop all about. And if they are scattered across the world, you cannot be flying about to show them what you've done on your Power BI desktop. 
what you need to do is to publish that report into the Power BI service. So Power BI service is a web service where all your reports, where you can publish all your reports. And once you have it on Power BI web service, then you can grant access to all the users. So when we talk about granting them access, as I said, on all devices, it can be on their mobile phone, they can view it on their pad, they can view it on their laptop, desktop, anywhere, anytime. And another important part in the architecture is what we call Power BI Gateway. Power BI Gateway will enable you to update the information into the web service as you update it in your database in the organization. On your system in the office, once you update the database, automatically it will sync it into what is in the cloud. And anybody that is viewing your data, your dashboard anywhere in the world, they will get online real time updated information. So you don't need to keep updating, I mean, publishing every day with the latest data. No, do it once, establish a gateway, and all your consumers, all your customers anywhere in the world, they get the latest information. Now, without wasting much time, let's get into the demo part of this work. So, let me launch Power BI. I believe you cannot see Power BI screen. Please confirm that you can see my screen. Yes, I can see your screen. Okay, yes. great. Yes, so, I can see your screen. let me show us the files we'll be using. I sent these files earlier to Ross. So this file is just an electronic sales file we should be using to do a visualization, insight, analysis, foresight, if time permits us to do all this. But I want to assure you, this is a tool that you will enjoy a lot. And before we move a step further, let me quickly open up what we have in each of those files. Okay, let me open that one up. Let me open this as well. Okay, I hope we have set. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Okay, great. One of the file is just telling us that we have different channels. As you can see, let me zoom closer so that we can all see. So this is telling us we have different channels. Number one, we have channel number one called store, channel two called online, channel three catalog, channel four reseller. This is just holding all the channels we have in the organization. And back to this, this is our sales report for, is it a year? Let me just say for a period. So the sales report is so detailed, massive, much as we scroll down. Now, with what we have, somebody gave us this report to work with. And in this report, look at the column in the report. We have the order ID, order D, the unit cost of the order, the unit price of the order, the order quantity. We are talking about eight quantity here. Yeah? The channel, now this is a big challenge here. Yeah? The channel here is one. When I'm giving a report, I cannot say that in channel one, we sold social number of quantity to via channel one. It's not professional. I need the name of the channel to come in here. For those of us that are very good in Microsoft Excel, then you'll be thinking of using tools like VLOOKUP. But don't bother. Power BI has lots and lots of things in stock for us. And using Power BI for your work, I want you to understand that you are not going to write much code. In fact, you may not even write any code throughout your, your reporting. And we have other columns here. The promotion name, the product name, the product category, and finally, the location. Okay, so this is what we have. And I want to quickly work on this report. So let me close 
the Excel. I don't need the Excel. Thank you, Excel. You've done your part. So I move straight into Power BI. Now on my Power BI screen, the first thing I need to do on my Power BI screen is to is to import all my data sets. So Mr. Abiju, we can't see your screen anymore. Oh, just a moment. I hope you can see my screen now. Yes, you're back on. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. So this is our Power BI screen. And on our Power BI screen, all we need to do is to get the data. Now, if you go back to our presentation, we are going to talk about what you call connecting to data and what ETL. So before I move a step further, what is ETL? Can somebody just tell me what's understand by ETL? Hello, I need somebody to unmute the mic and tell me what to understand by ETL. So that let me know I'm not alone here. I have more teachers in the house. OK, can I speak again? Am I speaking too much? I will not allow my staff to talk. <laughs> OK, I'm, I'm going to Thank you. I'm quiet, no problem. So I won't allow you. So sorry for not introducing her early. Amaka is, will be with me to take this section. So I need somebody else. What is ETL? What do you understand by ETL? Where is my chat? Type your answer in the chat box. Ha, if there is no answer, then there is fire on the mountain. Okay. okay hello. Hello, yeah, I can hear you. So um, basically, ETL is a uh, extract transformer load. So it um, it's a tool that extracts data from the source and then transfer it to what you want it to do and then loads it into the um, destination. Oh, thank you very much. So we are taking this session together. So I'll be calling you to take some part of this section. Are you ready? So let's go there. Now we want to quickly look at data, connecting to data and what ETL. So back to my screen. So I'm going to connect. And how do you connect to data source in Power BI? When you click here, you have all the data sources you can connect to, but understand one fact. Let me go to more. That is not all you can connect to. You can connect to, as I said during my introduction, over 200 data sources. As you can see them here, time will not permit us to go into these data sources one after the other. Just know that you can connect to lots and lots of data sources out there. Another interesting one is if your data is in PDF, you don't need to first of all look for a tool to convert them to Excel or anything. Power BI can connect directly to PDF and extract the data for you to start analyzing. So here yeah, I'm not going to connect to, to PDF. I'm connecting to what? To Excel. Let me select Excel. OK. Apart from P, I mean PDF, you can connect to SharePoint, Access, Oracle, DB2, many data sources as you have it there. So I'm going straight to Excel. Connect to Excel. OK, it will open up the dialog box for me to select the file I want to connect to. I'm connecting to, e, I guess I have demo. On the demo, connect to these two files. Connect to the electronic file. That is my real sales data. Okay, so I'm still trying. I'm waiting for the for it to load. Good. A dialog box will come up telling me navigator. So now on my navigator, I can see that this is the only file I have there. So that is sales detail. I will select the sales detail. I have the right 
to load it and start analyzing immediately. Or I may want to transform the data. So if I just load it, then I'm not doing ETL. I'm only doing EL. But let us do little in under transformation. I will click on transform. Once I hit transform, it will take me to where I will do my data transformation. And this is called Power Query Editor. So under Power Query Editor, I'm free to transform and make this work nice, beautiful. So let's look at what he has done for us. He has done for me about four steps. The first step is the source. That is where I got the data from. This database came from a particular worksheet from sales detail and so on and navigation oh, yes yeah let's be sure that everyone is you know doing the same thing on the right page with you okay so don't leave every anyone behind is everyone on the same page with mr dg have we lost anyone yes I hope we are on the same page. Okay, yes. yes. So thank you, Miriam. So can we move on? Please, if I'm too fast, the meeting chat is there. Just drop your comments. I have my colleague on board, so she will attend to you if you have any question. And if you need to call my attention, she will let me know. So please feel free to ask any question, drop your comments. OK, thank you, patience. So let's move on. OK, back to my power query. So this is a navigation screen and power BI. I mean, power query has done something interesting for me. It has helped me to promote the header. Promoting the header, if you look at the under navigation, my headers, they are supposed to be here, but it has done it for me automatic. Sometimes it will not do that for you. That is part of the ETL process. You need, in fact, let me take out those two steps, this step and this step. Now, this is the data I brought in, and I need to promote and make this heading to come up here to be a real heading. Now, what will I do? All I need to do, I can come in here. There's a small icon at the edge here. If I click on the icon, it will open up. So once you open up, then I'm free to do what I want to do. Look at the option here. It says use first role as header. So I'll click on it. It's going to promote the first role and make it header. Now it has done that. That's the step called promoted header. Now, the next option here is type. It has automatically helped me to change the type. This is number type, numeric type. This is also numeric type. I don't like numeric for this because it's a date. So one of the things I would like to do is to come here and say, please make this a date. Once I click on date, please add it as a new step. It has created a date, which is, we are all familiar with this, instead of looking at the date as number. So this is a date column. I love this. The next column here is my unit costs. It will cost me 10 Naira 29 Kobo to buy that particular item. Now that is the unit cost. And unit price, I guess we all know the meaning of unit price. Unit price is the price I I tag that particular item. So the next one is the quantity. How many quantity did I push out there? Apart from the quantity, the next one is what? The channel at which the sales happened. The next one is the promotion name and so on and so forth. So I think the the column name is making a whole lot of sense and the type. I'm okay with all the type, but I don't like this. The location, I can see Jigawa, I think, Northwest. I need to have states and, and is it zone, you call this, states and zone to be separated. So what will I do? 
there are a lot of lot of tools you can use here to do your transformation. I can right click on the heading. I can see all of them. If I don't need the column, I can remove it and so on. But I don't need to do all this during the full training. Then we have we don't have option. We must run through all that we have here. So I'm not replacing any value. I'm not looking for error. I want to split the column. Split the column. I have different options to split the column. Well, just split by delimiter. Delimiter means use a particular character to do the splitting. Go by delimiter. So once I click on by delimiter, it's suggesting that I want to help you split with an iPhone. It's so sensitive and it's intelligent. So he's even suggesting to me that I'm going to use this to, to split it for you. And I'll split on every occurrence. OK, no problem. Go ahead and split this for me. So I have location one, which is just the state. And also I have location two, which is northwest. Another challenge, if you look at location two, there is a space before it. Let me right click again. Another form of transformation here. Let me go to transform. Help me trim. Trim means if there's any leading space or trailing space in that world, take them out. Please help me trim this. I love this. In case there's any space here also, help me trim this. Transform. Where is trim? Trim again. Good. Now I've been able to clean up my work. Is there another thing I would like to do? Not really. OK, now let me quickly add one more column here. I have a column for unit price. I have a column for quantity. I need a column for sales and profits. So let me go back to my teams. So guys, I need you to help me. If I have three columns, the unit cost, the unit price and quantity, I want to calculate total cost. I want to calculate sales. And I want to calculate profits. So I need somebody to give me the formula to do that. Please, somebody in the house. I'm waiting. Ah. Are we together? We said yes. I want to calculate sales, total costs, and nobody is helping me out. I need somebody to help me here. The unit cost for an item is 10 Naira. I sold the item for 198 Naira, and the quantity I sold is, I have eight pieces. I need to generate more columns that I don't have them yet. How will I generate that column? Please help, 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 help. Sales is um, unit price times quantity. Sales is unit price times quantity. Thank you very much. Now, I want to do that here. All I need to do, I need a column. Under my ETL, I can come here that add a column for me. What type of column? I need a column, custom column. Let me call it, what should I call the column? Let's call it sales. Now, sales, she said is unit price. Let me pick unit price. Can you see what I did? I just double clicked on unit price. Multiply in Excel is the same thing as Power BI, which is star. Multiply it by what? Other quantity. I can select other quantity or double click. Once I select, I will say insert. It's telling me no syntax error have been detected. That means what I've done is OK. Let me click on OK and see if I will have answer. Can you see what I have here? I have my sales well calculated. So apart from sales, I said I need three things. Apart from sales, I need the quantity. I don't like the name here. I want these states. I don't like the name here. I want this to be zone and free. I can just double click and change it. Zone. So with this, I guess I am done so apart from sales i want to have other columns like profits like costs so what is costs i need help 
so that I won't be the only one doing this. What is cost? Where's my deputy teacher here? Oluwa Shemu, I can't hear you again now. Deputy. Oluwa Shemu. Okay, so let me move on. Costs. How will I do my cost? Cost is unit cost times quantity. Let me quickly do that. Add column. Give me another custom column. The custom column, let me call this total cost. Total cost is the unit cost, cost of one. Multiply it by cost of multiply by other quantity. I am okay with this. So I want it as a number. Don't take it as alphanumeric. So that is that. This column, which happens to be state, let me leave it like that. I will not do the profit here because there is a topic here called DAS. I will use DAS to do other calculation that might interest us. So with what I have done, my ETL process is almost completed. I have loaded. No, one more. I only load the sales detail. Let me load my channel. How will I load my channel now? All I need to do under home, I need a new source. I don't need to leave here. If the source is also from Excel, and I need to call up my channel. So I've selected channel. Yeah, bring in the channel for me. I'm okay. So the channel will show here. I have my channel and my sales. So I guess everything is in order. So without wasting much time, let us go into our visualization. All I need to do is to make sure I click on close and apply all this transformation I have done in my Power BI. Don't forget, we are, we've been in Power Query all this while. We are coming back to Power BI. Now, our Power BI screen is loaded. In case your Power BI screen is not like mine, no problem. Power BI is being updated every month. So just be sure that you have the latest version of Power BI. So this has fully loaded. Thank you. So let me quickly check the version of Power BI I am running. So that in case you don't have the same version, you can just know the reason why we don't have the same screen. So from here, all I need to do about, under help, about, under about, let me see the version I'm running. I'm running June 2020 version of Power BI. So we're already in July. So some of you might be running July, but I'm running June version. So that is that about Power BI interface. So Power BI screen has different ribbon, home ribbon, there are a lot of things here. Time will not permit us to go into them one after the other. But this part here, we do have option. We have to work with them. We have your data, I mean your report. This is your report. The second one is your data. If I click on it, I will see the data that was imported. I want to see my channel. I will click. I will see the channel. It will come up. And also, if I want to see the sales detail, I will select sales detail and I will see my sales detail. So this is where we do what we call relationship. So model. So we do relationship. There are two different tables, but these two tables need to be connected. So to connect them from channel, I need to talk to what? Sales. And to talk to them, I need to do what we call relationship. Let me remove the relationship I have here so I can show you how to do relationship. This was done automatically for me. Thank you, Power BI, for doing that. But what connects this to this? I have channel key here. If I check out what I have here, I also have channel somewhere here. So I need the channel key to connect to channel here. Once I do this, Power BI will help me to establish a relationship. So instead of these two tables to stay on their own, they are working together as one. Now back to what we have on the screen. So. The next thing I would like us to do here is to start building our reports. So I'm under reports. To build my reports, I can build it on page one. I can add more pages. 
So if I click on this plus, I know we are used to this, like it's just like Excel. I can right click and do some other things. I can duplicate the page. I can rename that page if I don't like that name there. So with what I have on the screen, let me quickly build a, small, a simple report. I would like to build a report that will show me the sales that happen in each channel. Let me open up the channel. Give me the channel name. Give me the channel name. I've selected channel. These are the channel names as I have it here. So apart from the channel name, let me see. I will come to the sales detail. Under sales detail, there is a column called sales. I want to see the sales. So I will select sales from here. Immediately, it has done an aggregate for me, telling me what and what happened to my sales. Let's format this and make it bigger. Let me come to format. What you have here is format. So instead of wasting my time, I can type what I'm trying to do. I want to work on the size. The size. The size is 10. 10 is too small. Make it 20 so that all of us can see. Great. So I think 20 is not bad. So I've increased the size to 20. Now, back to my visual. So this is already telling me I have the following based on each of the category. I don't like it this way. Can you give it to me as a visual? Maybe a pie chart, a donut, a column chart. I can do all this. Immediately, I have my chart ready for reporting. So this is good. So from analysis, I can see that my store is taking the lead, followed by sales online, followed by reseller, followed by catalog. Now, that hey, is Mr. one. Deji. Yes? Let's confirm if everyone is on track with you and we haven't lost anyone. OK. So please, I hope we are still on track. On track. OK, thank you very much. So. OK, show. Good, uh, you can go. I'll move on now. Yes, please. OK, so back to my Power BI screen. I hope my screen is visible to all. Confirm you are seeing Power BI screen now, so that it's no, not yet. We're no, not no, no, no. Okay, yes. Not yet. Yes, now we're seeing it. Oh, we're great. It now. Okay, you. so I've built one report, just single click. But the next report I would like to build, I want to see profits by products. There's product category here and profit, but very unfortunate. I don't have any column called profit here. Now I need to employ what we call DAS. I want to add more column. So there is a, the formula you use in Power BI is called DAS formula, data analysis expression. So it's just like your Excel formula, but it can be complex. It can even look like coding. So no problem. I've promised you I'm not going to write any serious code. So I need a new column to this. Let me click on new column. Once I click on new column, a new column will be inserted into this work. Where is the column? OK, a new column is ready to come in. This column, I want to call this column profits. And the profit should be equals to what? The profit should be equals to bracket open my unit costs, my unit cost, mind you, because I want to type a particular column that exists here. In Excel, you would have said A1, B1, but here, yeah, just start with a square bracket. Once you open a square bracket, all the column that exists will show. Can you see all my column? So I want to type unit. Once I type U, these are the two columns that start with U. Unit price minus another column unit costs so remove unit cost from unit price 
Then multiply whatsoever you get by the quantity. Another column called other quantity. Other quantity. Thank you. Now, this is our profit. And then I finish this, a column will show called profit. So I won't do so much around DAS, but just understand that that's how DAS work. So profit. But the what is showing here, I don't like it. I can select it and say I want it to come like currency. Don't forget, this is also like our Excel. Currency, I'm looking for Nigerian Naira under the currency. Where is Naira here? I hope Nigeria Naira will be here. Well, I don't have a doubt. We definitely will have, I can see a do Nigeria there. So let me go with that. So it's going to represent this as currency. So that's awesome, good. Can you see? Let me do the same thing to my sales. Sales, I need it to also come with a do Nigeria. Because I've just used Naira. Naira will be part of the things I'll be using. So thank you. I have done this in converted them to currency. Back to my report. Give me a report. Let me see the product categories we have. I will select product category. I can see audio, cameras, and so on. This product category, give me the profit we realize from each of the product category. Profit. So I can now make use of Profits. Now, can you see the total profit realized? 32 million. But don't just give me the profit. Give me the profit. Also, give me the what? The sales. Profit and sales. I want the sales to come before the profit. I can rearrange by just dragging and dropping here. Yeah. So sales should come before the profit. And let me work on the size. That size looks small. So we can all see. Give me size again. Sorry, size. OK, 10 is too small. Let's make it 20. Uh, 20, this is too big. Give me 15. I'm OK with 15. OK, now with what I've done, I've been able to do a nice report telling me all my product category against what and what we have here. So this is how I will keep building my reports. Let me see my promotion. Where is promotion here on this list? Promotion name against profit realized. Where is profit? Against profit realized. I want it like a donut. Great. No, give it to me like a bar chart. I think I love this. Let me make it bigger for us to see. Now, let me stop there. I've been able to do a nice visual. So I'm free to format my visual and make it very, very beautiful, attractive, whatsoever I want to do. I'm free to do that. So number one fact I want us to understand here, this is our promotion, but this particular one here is no discount. No discount means our normal sales. So it's not a promotion like others. This is Adventist promotion. This is winner's promotion. I can come here and say, please, you are not a promotion. I can easily right click on it and say, exclude this from my report. Once I click on exclude, I will have others, but without that particular one. This is good. And let's beautify this a little bit so that we can start to round up. So let me come here. I want to beautify. I want to work on the border. Let me quickly type border. So we have my border. Let me put the border on. The color of the border. I want the edge to be rounded edge. The color of the border so that we can see it clearly. Let me use another color. Color red for the border. Let's see whether it's there. Fine. Now we can see the border up and running. So the next thing we'll be going into, apart from border, we let me see, see your oh, there's no question, okay. We can't see uh, your screen. Hello, is that? Okay, good, it's back on, your screen is back on, thank you. Okay, thank you. So the next thing, 
let me work on the title. Apart from border, please help me work on the title. The title should be on. The color of the title, give me color red. No, I don't want red. Make the title color white. Color white. You will not be able to see the title color white. So what else can I do here? The back color, the title, I'm not seeing what I'm doing. Let me go back. Let me be sure I, I'm seeing the screen. I expect the title to change. The title color should be color white. Why the background of the title should be color maybe red again. So we can easily see. I hope this is working. Uh, why is the color not responding? Color white and the back should be color red. Do that for me. OK, thank you. The title looks small. Let me increase it a little bit. OK, I'm OK with this. I want to do the same thing to the title here. I don't need to waste my time. I will select this one and say Format Painter. The same format I have here. I need you. Where is the Format Painter? Uh, come on, Format Painter. The same format should be applied on this. So great. So that is a very fast way to achieve this. In case I want to have label for my work, I can also come here and say turn the data label on so we can see the figure on each of them. So because of time, I don't want to do so much around this. So I'm done with this report. I want to slice this report based on year. Let me come to other dates. I know we have other dates here. Drop down the other dates. On the other date is an hierarchy, automatic hierarchy. And look at what he has done for us. We only have date, but he has broken into year, quarter, month, and day. I want to have a slicer. Let me bring the slicer up. And the slicer should be done by year. Let me select year here. Yeah? So I don't like this type of slicer. Come as a list. List everything out for me. These are all the years I have. Let's say, let's see what happened in 2013. You know, I click on 2013. Everything reported here is a report of what happened in 2013. If I go to 2014, this is what happened in 2014. 2012, this is my sales in 2012. 2011, this is what happened in 2011. Can you see how Power BI is so interactive? Just having my slicer right there. So, that is that about building your reports. Let's now go into little of analytics or insights. Let me quickly build another report. The report I want to build, I would like to use what you call ask a question, Q and A. When I click on Q and A in Power BI, it will quickly come up like this, I telling me to ask a question. The question I want to ask, let me see. Let me see one of the things we've done. Sales. Sales by states. Maybe really I type sales by states. Observe what happened. He has given me this report just like that without wasting any time. Power BI has what we call Q and A. Just drop your question there. It will build the report for you. So let me continue. I want it as pie charts, as pie. In fact, I've not even finished. I don't want pie charts. Give it to me as map, because they are state, as map. Is that map? Oh, M-A-P. Am I, why is it not showing me the map of Nigeria? As map. OK, so this should be able to pull up the map of the country. And if it's not showing me the map of the country, oh, good. Can you see what he has done? This is awesome. So we can see it as a map telling me what is happening in different 
location. So that is one thing I can do with Power BI. I think I like this report, commit it for me. So one more report, let me do one more. So one more report, let me use the Q&A to be fast about it. Let me say profits, let me see the profit. Profit by year, Y-E-A-R. Profit by year, great as, as column charts. I don't need to waste my time. He has done this for me. Okay, so thank you. Now, with what he has done, he has given me to me year by year. Look at how our sales look. Let me also commit this. This is a nice report. So with what I have here, year 2011, this is my sales. 2012, this is my sales. 2013. Now, you all agree with me that if you should give the management this report, they will definitely ask you, why is our sales nose diving? Why is it going down? How we made 12 million in 2012. Why is our profit going down to 10 million in 2013? 2014, it went further down to 9 million. So I want to see why there's a drop. Power BI says, don't stress yourself thinking about the analytics involved. Just say analyze. Under analyze, right click on the bar in question. This is the bar in question. I can come here and say analyze. Analyze, explain to me what led to the what decrease. Once I click on that, Power BI will tell me here is the analysis of 17.67% decrease in profits. Now, from here, it's telling me that number one thing you observe, that there's a major drop in store. Can you see? That means people stop going to store between 2012 and 2013. So I can use this as one of the things I'll tell the management. They have they, our customers stop going to our store. What can we Please confirm okay, that you can hear me, please. Okay, we can we can hear you now. You're back on. So show us your screen, please. We can't see your screen. Okay. Where's my screen again? So I'm back to this screen. I hope you can see this screen. We can't see the screen yet. Uh, okay, let me unshare and share again. Um, I hope you can see my screen now. Not yet. Uh, what can I do? Okay, disconnect totally. Connect back. Share the screen.
please confirm that you can see my screen now. Uh, yes, it's back on. Oh, yes. Now, can you see what we have on the screen telling me what camcorder is doing? So, let me scroll down. It has given me lots and lots of insights that I can use to defend my reports without writing any code. So, if I love any of them, I'm free to add it to the list of my reports. Let me just right click. If I love any of them, analyze, explain the decrease, I can just add it to the list. Now, once I'm done with this report, all I need to do is to publish my report to the cloud so that I can share this report with my colleague anywhere. Okay, I, I want to add this. I'll just click on the plus. Once I click on the plus, that will be part of my report. If I go back to my report now, I will have it on the reports. He has added it as one of the reports. So please, at this point, let me allow us to ask questions. So the other part is web service, where we can drop what we've done in the cloud, establish a gateway with the database. It can be in Excel. I don't care what database is. So as I edit the content there, or I had more content, what is in the cloud automatically will refresh, and I can share that with anybody anywhere in the world. I can do a mobile version of this work, of my report. Let me come to the first page. On my first page, I want to have a mobile layout of this report. Once I click on mobile layout, the next thing is going to do, it will give me a, an interface that look like a mobile phone. This is the interface. I can drop my report on the interface and build it the way I want them to see it on a mobile platform. So this is a nice report as we have it here, and so on and so forth. So let's go to question and answer section because I don't want to keep us waiting unnecessarily. This is just a minute to the end of the section. So back, so questions. If you have any question on what we've done so far, please feel free to ask any question around Power BI, and let's do justice to this. Okay. Hello, questions, please. Okay, praise. Praise, you are recognized. Can you ask your question? Okay, um, good evening, everybody. So mine is not really a question. It's just like appreciating you because I think this is the best I've seen like doing Power BI on that one hour. So I just want to say thank you for taking out time to do this for us. Okay, thank you very much. Praise for praising me. Any other question? Question, please. Let's ask questions around Power BI, around web service, around. Power BI, let's talk about it. Questions, please. Yes. Okay. Hello. 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 Yes, I can hear you. OK, so that part where you multiplied the cost versus the quantity to get yes. the, what, the profit, the first one. So I noticed okay. that in all the sections, Power BI automatically multiplied everything. In in all the section, all the multiply. cells, Excel cells. No, it's, it's only multiply the cells you want it to multiply. 
it based on what you put. Tell. Yes. It must, yeah, you only do one formula. Don't worry. If your list is running to one billion, don't stress yourself. You just mention the headings as we have done it, and it's going to do that for you with ease. So know that you do one and you will drag down like Excel. No, you don't drag down in Power BI. Mm. Just do one and it will get everything done for you. Oh. That's fine. Hello? Hello, yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud okay. and clear. All right, thank you. Um, so thank you very much for the lecture. But um, there's one thing I would want to ask for those 